Hey guys, I've been asked by many students how to work through and use decimals. Before we look at decimals as a topic, we need to understand how decimals actually work and what place values come after what we call the decimal point. Let's look at this example and you'll see how easy it is. In here, we have an example that says 3547.90. Now the 3,547, we know the 3 holds the value of 1,000. And the 5 is the place value of 100. The 4 has the place value of a 10. And in the 1's column, we know the 7 is there. 3,547. Then we have point. So the numbers that come after the point are parts of numbers. They're not actually whole numbers. We have point. 908. The 9 is in the 10th column. We call it the 10th column, which is 1 out of 10. So in here we're saying 9 out of 10. Then we have the 100th column. The 0 is in the 100th column, which means a number out of 100. Very small number. And then we have the 1000th column. In this example, our 8 is in the thousandth column, which means 8 out of 1,000. Very, very small number indeed. So 3,547.908. Now, let's see how we write this decimal in expanded form using the examples I have there for you. We have 6.124. If we understand the place values, be easily able to write it down in expanded form. Let's see how it actually works. The 6, think about it. Which column is it in? Which place value does it hold? The 6 holds the units or the 1's column. So to write it down in expanded form, 6 times 1. We now have categorized it and we've said this is a 1 in the 1's column, or the unit's column, so it's 6 times 1. Then we realize we have our point, so 6 point, we have 1, and the 1 is straight away, we know, the first column after, or the first value after the point, is the 10th. So we know 1 times a 10th. Then we look to the next number. We know units or ones, point. We know tenth. After the tenth, straight away we know it goes up by, and it goes to a hundredth. So plus two times a hundredth. And we look, we have a four. Now the four, which place value does it hold? We have tenth, hundredth, thousandth. So, plus 4 times 1,000th. I always tell my students an easy way to quickly notice what they are. The number, the first number after the decimal point will have 1 zero. The second number after the decimal point will have two zeros. And the third number after the decimal point will have three zeros. So six times one is in the ones column. The one in this case is in the tenth column. And then we have the two is in the hundredth column. And the four is in the thousandth column. So here we have now written this decimal in expanded form. Very easy, very straightforward. Let's look at another example. See if you can do this one yourself before I start and see if you can get it right. So I ask myself, what place value does the first number have? The 8 in this case is a 1's. So it's 8 times 1. That's completed. Then I notice there's a decimal point. So I'm going now to the 10th column. 10th, 6 times 
one tenth. Then I'm going to the hundredth column because it's a second number. So I know second number means two zeros, which means a hundred, which is the seven times one hundredth. And I notice the third number after the point. Third number means three zeros, which is the five times one thousandth. So that's an expanded form. And as you can see, expanded means it's going to be big, it's going to be large, it's expanded. So eight tenth means point six seven five. Okay, we have some more examples. Hopefully by now you've got an understanding. See if you can do these with me and you'll notice it's easy and very straightforward. Okay, 0 0.203. 0 point, meaning we have no whole numbers. So we move on to the numbers after the point. Our first number after the point is in the tenth column. And we notice it's a 2, so in expanded form, 2 times 1 tenth. Because it's the first number, I put 1, 0. Another way to remember it. Then we notice we don't have a hundredth number. We have the tenth, we don't have a hundredth, so we skip it straight away and we move to the thousandth. So 3 times 1 so straight away by looking at it, by looking at this number, I have a tenth and I have a thousandth. I don't have a whole number, it's zero. I have a tenth, I don't have any hundredth, so I put a zero. And my three is the thousandth column. Another example here. I look at it and I say, okay, 12.08. Now the 12, I look at the 1, the 1 is in the place value of tens, so 1 times 10, then plus, the 2 is in the 1's column, And then I move on, I see a point, I'm going now to the tenth. The tenth, it's a zero, so I don't have to write the tenth, it doesn't exist. Then I move on to the hundredth, in this case here it's an eight. Eight times one hundredth. So this is the tens, there it is, two times one, that's the units, point, there's no tenth. But there is a hundredth, eight times one over a hundred. So as you can see, understanding decimals is very easy as long as you know the place values. Very important, we have tenths, hundredths, thousandths. We can even have tenth, tens of thousandths and hundreds of thousandths, which keep going. But usually the first three or four are very important for us to know. And as you can see, numbers after the point are the tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Very small numbers, but for us, we need to know them very well and understand how to work with them, as you can see here.